No more intro, sorry about that. But anyways, guys, uh, welcome to the making of my Wolverine costume or cosplay, whichever one you want to call it. But uh, now originally this was supposed to be a Halloween costume, but I have a con to go to. I decided to go last minute, but uh, I needed, I was going to make this already. I had this plan a couple weeks, uh, a month ago. Uh, that's how long I, I've been working on this cosplay. But um, anyways, it's not only for my friend uh, Raven's Prop Shop. I'll put their uh, link in the link and uh, socials down in the description down below. But there, uh, I had an amazing Wolverine. I saw the sack anime and I was like, oh, that really kind of, that last little push to make mine for this Lodi Comic Con. Stay tuned for that. That's going to be in, it's going to be the next video after this one. But I expect a vlog in the full Wolverine suit. And yeah, let's get on to the video. And I like to say sorry for the poor microphone I'm using this headset because I don't have, as you can see, I have no microphone. I have no microphone to talk to. No, no better microphone, at least for you guys. So yeah, let's work play. Hey, so we started with the helmet. I decided to 3D print that because I did not want to be making all that. I also had a month to make all this. Well, less than a month because I only had basically three days out of the week to make this. As you can see, we did the dome first. Then we did the little eyes or wing parts. Where I got this file was BO 3D. And as you see, all those tree supports. Oh my god hated all that thanks to my my friend raven prop shop they actually helped me a lot with this 3d with all the 3d printing issues i had and stuff so big shout out to them for basically helping me through all these problems but unfortunately i printed all this after all this uh, all after all my problems basically but and now i know they learn from our mistakes but as you see using the solder, soldering iron to melt and smooth everything out and everything with the dupa color filler primer this stuff is amazing as you can see, and then we're gonna just move on to some sanding. All right, so new shirt, new day. As you can see, there's a little bit of layer line still on here. Well, that's totally fine, it's totally fine. You know, we're gonna keep sanding, keep filling, or oh, keep priming, and then uh, till we get a, a decently smooth Wolverine helmet. Now this is where I'm gonna still use the 120 grit, but then right after I'm gonna switch over to the 150 grit, and maybe it depends. I'm gonna hit it with a little 400 grit. That should be about it. That's all I have on hand right now. So, uh, yeah. After I got the dome all, all printed and a bunch of supports still in there, we just had to use the drum to get out. But we used the orbital sander to get the majority of these layer lines out. The orbital sander saved my life. I'm so glad I have this thing. But you can obviously, uh, you know, do hand sanding. It's just gonna take a little longer. But uh, I had a, if, if you want any tips, I. It just don't keep in the same area for too long unless you're gonna melt the plastic and we do not want that so we just hit this I believe this is an 80 grit on my orbital center I'm not sure it's been a while or maybe 120 grit I don't know I'm, I'm still learning all the sanding stuff but yeah And then I hit, went outside to go hit it with some filler primer. Took a lot of coats and a lot of sanding, post processing for 3D prints <laughs> a lot. That's why I don't usually, that's why I stick to foam because post process is a little more easier. But hey, it, choose your, pick your poison. You want to do 3D printing or you want to do foam smithing? I did uh, both for uh, this whole entire project. So yeah. Okay, so I got everything sanded, everything primed right now. Everything looking smooth. This is the smoothest print I've ever got compared to my uh, red hooded helmet. But yeah, so first off, when I was printing the back plate, I'm pretty sure I didn't scale it correctly. So I didn't scale it correctly so it doesn't fit the back part. At least I hope so, let me double check. I highly doubt it. Yeah, I didn't scale it correctly to the part because I, 
I guess it's at 100% scale, and my helmet I printed at 108% because it was a little small for me. Uh, but uh, when I printed the back plate, as you can see, it was a major layer shift in this piece, so I decided to reprint it. And the second time it came out a little bit better, but unfortunately there was still a bit of layer shifting. But, and, but either way, I didn't notice this until I realized I didn't scale this up and I didn't want to go through another, another print time. So what I'm gonna do, go back to old foam smithing, use some duct tape, get the outline of this basic inner part right here, and then kind of mimic this kind of design for the roundness. That way the back part is still stretchy, I can get my head through it, because I'm gonna glue all this together. So yeah, let's pull a pattern from this. Now here's a little test fit after I got that little foam back piece out, and I think it looks pretty dang good. Now we move on to the chest armor thing but uh this thing was 36 pages and i had to cut this and i lost my exacto knife so i didn't know where it was so i used my utility knife but anyways enough rambling i got this pattern from sks props the link will be in the description down below so if you want an in-depth video of how he made it uh go watch that i don't know why you would just watch uh me doing uh my little time lapse just do this but just go watch his video uh he described everything really really well and it was pretty simple the only thing bad part about this was um I should have cut out all this, and it's 36 pages. probably wondering what am I doing here messing up this beautiful template he decided to make well I wanted to actually combine some of the comic style plus the movie style because uh, even though the movie was pretty dang good the suit was a little too much uh, I guess MCU if I, I would like to call it too much lines and stuff but I decided to do a little I don't know what to call these shapes I kind of forgot Man, I'm kind of blanking on while I'm recording this but I decided to make my own uh, kind of side pieces from the comic books and then I modified everything and I think it turned out pretty dang well
Right here I am cutting out areas before I can fit my buckles. It's a lot of buckles. I need people to help me get into the, the suit, unfortunately. That's the one downside about this. But yeah, I just kind of glued my own straps, kind of guesstimated where it was going to be at. And everyone's body is different, so you're going to have to you know, find out where it's at. I kind of guessed, thankfully, I got it close enough or good where I can actually, you know, it fits me well. So test and then have a friend or someone else help you with it. I didn't have it, I did it by myself. So it is possible. But as you can see, that's how it fit on me earlier. But uh, come on, I look like Max Steel like that. So I'm not, I'm not complaining. I kind of did not want to paint it because I did like the black and white kind of theme going on there. But after that, we moved on to making the forearm pieces, which I grabbed some aluminum foil and some duct tape, and I did this on my left uh, forearm because I am right-handed. It'll be a lot more easier than me just drawing it left hand. This is a pretty simple tactic from, um, you know, back in the foam smithing days when we did have all this 3D printing. I sound like an unk. I'm sorry for rambling. But anyways, yeah, it's just old school aluminum foil, duct tape, draw the pattern. And then I transferred those patterns onto some Bristol board. That way it's a little more manageable to work with and stuff. And it actually helped me out, so yeah. All right, got done with the right shoulder, 3D printed. As you can see right here, it was printing and then, of course I had to get a layer shift, but I ended up peeling, it was just that one part, I ended up peeling it off and then PLA welding it. So it has this, now I have this, still have the seam. I'm just gonna hit it with some uh, quick seal and then hit it with some primer. Now I am moving on to the claws where I got from Amazon. I want to get the different ones, but they were going to take, it was going to come after, like, mid-October, and I was like, okay, I, I don't have enough time, so I just settled with these. Thankfully, they fell apart on me when I was messing around with them. Either way, I needed to paint them and then put some graphite powder, because, as you can see on the little, kind of, finger per, finger piece, it, that was a, it's just a plain silver, and I kind of wanted to do, like, a metallic metal. Now I got to do this five more times for claws. Now, there's the grip part. It's just assembling with some hot glue. Nothing too fancy. What all I do is just hold it in place, glue it, and I have myself some nice sold metallic claws.
Plastic up everything. Uh, I didn't really tell you or show you guys how I made those boot parts because basically well, I just found a free pattern online. I'll leave a link in the description. I forgot where the where I got it from, but I'll definitely give them credit down in the description. But they were some boot covers which I needed because I had black boots and I wanted to do some uh, some extra particular styles for my boots. I didn't want to paint the black boots. I just well, I needed to extend them out further. So yeah, here's me plastic. Took about two or three coats for uh, I believe the smaller parts, but for, for the chest piece, that took I know for sure that I did three coats. After all that masking, and t like we get to take it off, and uh, unfortunately, after all this was painted, my chin strap broke when I put it on, and thankfully it did because I put some elastic and some Velcro. That way, the chin part can be detachable, and it can also stretch when I talk. So I think this is a great mod for your Wolverine helmet if you decide to 3D print them. I would say it's a mod. It's just, it's just I, I don't know how to explain that, uh, man kind of out of it.
Get all the unmasking. All of our hard work now come together. Now, don't be don't be dumb like me. I thought I could be I could be slick and not mask it. I decided to mask it in the end because it's a smarter way and I could just, you know, flow freely without being too precise. After the reveal for everything is done, I had to do the pants. I forgot. Thankfully, these things came in earlier than expected. They're just some uh, some yellow kind of jogger pants. I'll leave them all everything in the link in the description down below where I got everything. And I just glued some foam parts of on it. There's the 3D printed shoulder parts, as you can see, and the Wolverine helmet. Now it's time to fully unveil. Now that is the full costume, full costume of the Wolverine, as you can see. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of touch up before the cough, but this, obviously wearing the short sleeve, I'm gonna wear a tank top under this thing. Yeah, we are the Wolverine. Well, my variant. Kind of modernized the comic books plus the movie combined into one. As you can see, it came out pretty dang clean. I'm very happy with this. As you can see, oh, steel toe boots. I'm happy to walk in. I'm already sweating. Can't wait to walk around in the hot sun like a cup. Also got a Google chin strap, green claws. That way I can do some cool scenes. Anyways, like this video, comment, like, and subscribe. See you guys in the next video. Peace out. I got out of the suit. I wasn't even in there. I wasn't even in the suit for 10 minutes. And I'm already, so, my, this shirt's already so full of sweat. My legs are just sweating. This is, this is gonna be a crazy, it's gonna be a crazy con because the con for the load icon, the load icon, it's gonna be outside majority. And that's what I'm fear of the glue and stuff is gonna melt off. But I'm gonna bring some super glue just in case. So yeah, stay tuned for that.